I saw a wonderful example of this a while back. I'm sure a number of you have seen that same example. There's a movie and a documentary called Free Solo. And if you haven't seen it, I really recommend it. Uh, it was someone who, a young man who from Sacramento, actually, who climbed El Capitan, which is 3,000 feet of granite cliff in Yosemite National Park, climbed it alone with no equipment. And that takes some compartmentalization <laughs> to do that, because it's not climbing a mountain, it is climbing straight up, straight up. And it is very interesting. I never have had a lot of exposure to rock climbing, so it's very interesting. He had every single movement planned. He knew exactly where the holds were, where the next one is, where the next one is, how you get there, what you do in order to get there, where to hang on. It all planned in advance. It was so, so, it was so organized. And as he was doing this climbing, can you imagine doing the climbing for one thing, but for another thing, you know that there are video cameras below you, to the side of you, above you, because they're making a movie of this. It wasn't like he didn't know there was a movie being made. He was cooperating with this. And he had to shut so much out of his mind in order to, to do this. He had to shut out of his mind things like, wow, that's a great view. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do that. Or I wonder if this movie is going to do real well. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. There was no room for anything else. Anything else but the focus on what I'm doing now and how do I get to the next step. Nothing else. And of course, as we all know, if you've done anything that it takes a lot of focus, and it's whether it's uh, rock climbing or sports or art or cooking, that when you're in that zone, when you're in that place of there's only one thing going on here, it's an incredible experience. Incredible experience that, that this is why they climb rocks. And other people do sports, and other people cook, and other people garden. You get into that zone where there's only one thing going on. And that's what the saints are really trying to inspire us to do. They've learned how to live in that zone where there's only one thing to do. But this is what the saints are showing us through their example, encouraging us through their teachings, and equipping us through the techniques that they share for us to do the same thing. And not just in our meditations, although very, very important in our meditations, but those two forces, their creative force and the unitive force, they're happening all the time. And that focus that's so important in meditation the more we can bring that out into the other areas of our lives and try to try our best to compartmentalize there as well. What is, in, the, in what I'm doing right now, whether it's feeding the dog or something supposedly important, that everything is important because every moment has the potential for us to be in that zone, to be in that space where the only thing that's going on here is just my relationship with God. That's all that's happening. 